is the, the function of, of the behavior. And as a result of his inability to discard certain items, his bedroom, his living room, his kitchen are very cluttered, and he can hardly use them, which sounds a lot like the first woman that I described. And he shows no interest, he shows no interest in the items that he hoards and is not emotionally attached to them. Um, instead, he actually reports that he'd like to be able to get rid of them. He's just afraid to do so. And the hoarding symptoms cause great distress and inter interfere substantially with his life. So a difference here uh, between the OCD symptom of, of hoarding, where OCD can kind of um, manifest as hoarding, but hopefully you, you're able to see very clearly the hoarding has a different function. Okay, on to olfactory reference syndrome. We're going to come back to hoarding in a little bit. On to olfactory reference syndrome. So this is a condition that um, is described by the preoccupation with the belief that one emits a foul or unpleasant, offensive uh, bodily odor uh, that's not actually perceived by others. So they're actually not emitting uh, the odor. Um, and the preoccupation causes clinically significant distress. I'm going to give you a case example in a second. So the person might become depressed, they might be uh, ashamed or embarrassed, um, might be anxious, and the impairment, um, of course, in social functioning and other areas of functioning as well. And again, this is not due to some sort of a direct physiological problem um, or a medical condition, and the preoccupations are not restricted to the symptoms of another disorder. Some people have schizophrenia and they have delusions that they're emitting a foul odor and th that would not be classified as olfactory reference syndrome um, or other psychotic disorders where that occurs as well. And you can have good, good or fair uh, insight or poor insight. So to the extent that the person recognizes that this olfactory reference syndrome is uh, probably not true, that their beliefs are not true, um, or if they think that the beliefs are probably true, then they have uh, poor insight, or you can have delusional beliefs where they're completely convinced that uh, this is actually going on. So here's Mr. K, he was a 27-year-old man who described a persistent preoccupation <clears throat> which had begun six years previously with the idea that he smelled of urine. And each time he urinated, he worried that he had wet his underwear and that consequently people would think that he smelled of urine. And he stated that these thoughts occupied most of his waking time, and as a result of the thoughts, he would repeatedly check his underwear for urine stains, and he would change his clothing excessively often and would use more deodorant than usual. In addition, there's shame and embarrassment about the perceived odor, and this gradually led him to avoid more and more social interactions, and he even began to miss days at work, and he became increasingly demoralized at the time of present, uh, presentation. He exhibited a number of symptoms of depression, but he didn't meet criteria uh, for a major depressive episode. Uh, but when he, he was questioned very carefully, he said that most of the time, he was pretty certain that he, that he did smell of, of urine, but on occasion, uh, he would kind of come to his senses and realize that the preoccupations were probably excessive and unreasonable. No history of classic OCD symptoms, classic obsessions or compulsions, although you, you might notice that he engaged in some checking rituals and certainly had these intrusive, uh, you know, anxiety-provoking ideas and thoughts, which sound similar to obsessions and compulsions. Um, and there was no history of substance abuse uh, or underlying general medical disorder. <coughs> and then finally, the third new, potentially new disorder is the skin-picking disorder. You can probably guess what that involves, recurrent skin picking, and it has to result in something, you know, skin lesions, some sore uh, on the skin. Causes clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of functioning, and it's not due to the physiological effects like a, a dermatological uh, disorder, which can sometimes lead to uh, similar kinds of behavior. Um, and again, it has to be not restricted to the symptoms of another mental disorder. So it can't be um, along with uh, delusional beliefs about the skin infestation that we sometimes see in uh, psychotic disorder uh, or uh, body dysmorphic disorder where the person is preoccupied with their appearance and they're manipulating their, their skin or their body in some way. So we're differentiating it from those problems. So an example of skin picking, this is Ms. B, uh, was a 33-year-old unmarried female who described persistent picking of the skin on her hands near her fingernails, uh, which had begun when she was about 19 years old. And on occasion, she would spend hours at a time picking at her fingers, sometimes staying up very late at night or into the early morning hours, unable to stop the picking. She reported that the picking was aimed at making the skin on her fingers feel smooth, so it had a purpose. And um, 
but it had no natural stopping point. She could go for hours and hours, and she would often try to resist inspecting her skin and, and, and picking, uh, but this was very difficult. Usually once she started, it was difficult for her to, to stop the picking. And sometimes she would even use uh, tweezers or a nail clipper to help her out uh, to get, get the fingernail, the fingers, uh, the skin as, as she wanted it. Uh, and as a result of the skin picking, her fingers were perpetually red and sore. Sometimes they became infected. Uh, and she usually picked when she was alone uh, and, sh and felt uh, ashamed and embarrassed about her behavior. Nevertheless, uh, her social and her work functioning continued. She, she was relatively uh, intact in those uh, spheres of functioning. Her main complaints were that she had the sores on her skin and the associated distress with uh, not being able to stop the, the picking. She would lose sleep because she was up till 3 o'clock in the morning uh, picking at her fingers. Um, she showed some depressive symptoms but didn't have major depressive disorder and there was no history of uh, you know, other problems like uh, OCD or psychotic behavior. And no history of substance abuse or, or anything like that. So I, I tell you about these to kind of set the stage uh, for uh, four different issues that I want to talk about uh, regarding these proposals for these disorders but also some of the other uh, issues that I mentioned uh, earlier, different changes that are proposed for uh, DSM-5. So first we're going to deal with this idea of whether uh, OCD uh, is truly an anxiety disorder or whether it should be removed from the, the anxiety disorders. And we'll start by what, what are the essential features of, of OCD? How do we think about OCD? We know we have obsessions. These are unwanted thoughts, ideas, or impulses. And the important thing about obsessions is that they give rise to significant anxiety or fear. They, they provoke anxiety. And compulsions, as defined in the DSM, are these urges to perform rituals. They can be behavioral, overt acts. They can be mental acts or covert uh, rituals that are aimed to reduce the anxiety or the distress or the fear that's associated with obsessions. So the key is that in OCD, the compulsive behaviors, the rituals, are really an escape or an avoidance strategy. And they're performed in response to an obsessional fear. These symptoms actually go together. And in the DSM-4 now, um, I think, unfortunately, it actually says that you either need obsessions or compulsions in order to have a diagnosis of OCD. And, and I think what it should say is that you have to have obsessions and compulsions. And that's a whole other talk uh, that we won't get into. However, what has been proposed is that OCD be taken away from the anxiety disorders, and instead we have this new obsessive compulsive spectrum. And this I um, Xeroxed from a, uh, a journal article in the Journal of Clinical Psychiatry from about 15 years ago. This is an early incarnation of Eric Hollander's idea. Eric Hollander is one of the uh, folks who's behind this um, obsessive compulsive spectrum push. Uh, his idea of what, what is included in this spectrum, and I'll just kind of, where's my pointer? I'll kind of go through some of these so you can see if you uh, can't read it. So somatoform disorders, hypochondriasis, body dysmorphic disorder, dissociative disorders, maybe even uh, de depression, eating disorders, anorexia nervosa and binge eating, what he calls schizo-obsessive disorders, so delusional OCD, um, psychotic OCD, obsessional uh, uh, obsessions that, have, that are more like um, psychotic delusions, tick disorders and um, uh, Tourette syndrome, other neurological disorders like Huntington's chorea, um, autism, uh, Sydenham's chorea, uh, and then impulse control disorders, so compulsive buying, kleptomania, um, I'm forgetting what SIB stands for, sexual compulsion, so um, you know, compulsive internet um, and, and uh, masturbation, uh, trichotillomania, um, and then other impulsive, what he calls impulsive personality disorders, borderline personality disorder, um, and it's actually hard pressed to think of any disorders that wouldn't be included uh, in the OCD spectrum. Over the last 10 years or so, this has actually been pared down. And so now in the recent, most recent iteration of what's an OCD spectrum disorder, we have OCD, we have hoarding, we have trichotillomania and some other impulse control disorders, not exactly clear, but most recently we see compulsive skin picking being included among those and uh, tick disorders like uh, Tourette syndrome um, are included among those. So 